Our mission for WinWedge is to make data collection easy and reliable with great control and flexibility. In another tutorial, we showed you how easy it is to use the keyboard buffer functionality of WinWedge to log data to your application as if the operator were actually typing the data manually on the keyboard, only much faster and with 100% accuracy. Today, this demonstration goes further into using the advanced feature sets of WinWedge to help you log data with complete reliability and control and make collection more automatic while reducing the user's involvement. The process behind this is DDE communication. DDE is an acronym for Dynamic Data Exchange. It's a feature of Windows that allows two programs to share data or send commands directly to each other. You can think of it as a direct conversation between two applications. The combination of WinWedge and DDE provides you with these great benefits. First, you don't need to be using the application when you collect the data. As long as WinWedge is activated and your application is open, you could be working on a report, typing a document, or doing something else entirely, all while the data is being logged in the background. Second, the data will always be transferred exactly where you want it with no manual input from the user. Third, you can deeply integrate WinWedge into any program or programming language that has DDE capabilities. This includes Microsoft Office applications like Excel and Access, Visual Basic 6 and Visual Studio.net custom applications, and many other third-party Windows programs. For this video, I will configure Excel to automatically collect data from an electronic balance using WinWedge. A common request is to log each new balance reading down a particular column and place a timestamp next to it. Let's do this. To get started, we'll use all the resources and code samples provided on our website. Point your web browser to www taltech.com slash support slash WinWedge and click on WinWedge DDE macro examples. Here you'll see a comprehensive list of sample macros used to accomplish a wide range of tasks in Excel, Access, Visual Basic, and more. Under the Excel section, let's click Collecting a Single Field of Data into Excel. This page contains full instructions for setting up both WinWedge and Excel. Remember, we have lots of articles, code samples, downloads, and videos, so be sure to browse around after the demonstration to perform other tasks. The first step on this page is to set up WinWedge in DDE server mode. This enables WinWedge to use all of the features we discussed earlier. Go ahead and open up WinWedge now. If you haven't already configured the correct serial communication settings for your device, do that now before continuing. I'll keep going as I've pre-configured WinWedge to work with my balance. Now click on Mode and select DDE Server Mode. This is the window where you'll set the DDE settings. To get WinWedge working with Excel, we'll need to configure a command that gets sent to your workbook and runs a VBA subroutine each time a new data record is received. WinWedge needs to know these three settings. The application name, the topic name, and the command. By default, Every new untitled instance of WinWedge is already configured with the correct settings using Excel as the DDE application name and System as the DDE topic name. These of course will vary for other applications. You will now see that I've already set the DDE command. This command varies based on the target application and what you intend to do in that application. To run a subroutine in Excel, you will use the run command, which is the word run followed by the macro or subroutine name enclosed in double quotes and parentheses as shown here. Also note that square brackets are used to enclose the entire command. The subroutine for our basic example is called get single field. Let's click OK and save our work. Now open up a new instance of Microsoft Excel. Let's first label our columns so we know where we want the data. We'll label column A data and column B timestamp. We also now need to format column B to accommodate our timestamp. Right click in column B and click Format Cells. Depending on what you need, you can click the date and time in many different ways. Since I want both the date and the time, I'll select the date category and scroll down until I see both the date and time formatted in the same string and click OK. Now that we know where to place our data, we need to open up the VBA editor. For versions of Excel prior to 2007, the editor is located in the Tools menu. For versions of Excel on or after 2007, the editor is located in the Developer tab. If you do not see the Developer tab on the ribbon,
click on File or the Office button and select Options. In the Options menu, select Customize Ribbon and make sure the Developer option is checked in the right pane. Click OK to make the change. Now, go to the Developer tab on the ribbon and select Visual Basic. The VBA project window will appear. The first thing that we need to do is to create a new module to store our subroutine by navigating to the Insert menu and clicking Module. With the module open, let's go back to the Taltech website and scroll down to the code listed on this page. This is a very basic subroutine that collects data from field 1 in WinWedge and logs it to column A along with an optional timestamp in column B. Highlight the code, right click, and select Copy. Return to the Visual Basic Editor and paste the code in Module 1. As is, this code will connect to WinWedge on COM1, collect data from Field 1, and log data to Column A. We will also add an optional timestamp in Column B. To enable this timestamp, uncomment the last line in the subroutine. If your device is on a COM port other than COM1, change the port number by simply replacing 1. For example, if your device is on COM3, replace a 1 with a 3. If your data is in a field other than field 1, simply replace 1 with the number of the field you wish to collect data from. To collect data from field number 2, replace a 1 with a 2. We can also easily change the column that the data and timestamps are logged to by replacing these column references. If you wish to log data in a sheet other than the default first sheet that appears, you can change the sheet reference at these three locations. You can use a numeric value or reference your sheet by name. If your sheet is called device data, replace each reference with the words device data in these double quotes. We are now done creating our subroutine. Let's close the VBA window and save our workbook. To test our subroutine and start the data collection, activate WinWedge and send a data reading. For my particular scale, I can trigger it to send a weight reading by pressing a print button directly on the scale. As you can see, data is being logged to Excel with a date and timestamp. If you decide to work on another project or use another application during the data collection, WinWedge in Excel will continue to log in the background. As you can see, even without having Excel or WinWedge running in the foreground, I can still capture data readings from the scale. Thank you for watching this demonstration. For more advanced subroutines or to learn more about creating and using macros in Excel using the Visual Basic for Applications, check out the support section of our website at www.taltech.com. To explore more Excel samples, you can also download a sample workbook for Excel in the WinWedge download page. As always, feel free to contact our support team with any issues or to inquire about a specific data collection application.